it, the only way that you could uh, then have access to it uh, would either be through something that's called an equivalence process, by which the rules that would then be operating in the UK have to be deemed equivalent by the EU, or they'd have to go in each uh, country that they wanted to go in, country by country, rules by rules. Those would be long, uncertain processes. I think they would add cost, uh, and they would. that is why, I think, if you talk to take your example of the banks, the banks say very clearly that if we leave, uh, they're going to be cutting jobs. What I know from having to go through equivalence processes with, say, the United States, where I've recently done one, uh, where I wanted to do it quickly, the Americans wanted to do it quickly, on one point, that took four years. Is it you put the um, boot on the other foot, and you think of this as it, as it would be, as a straightforward commercial transaction. You know, trade negotiations aren't about love, they're about power. Business negotiations are about power. So if you think that you have, on the one hand, a group of nations who want Britain to stay, we would then say, no, nope, we don't want you. We haven't been particularly flattering in some of the terms in which we've described some of these countries during the debate. And then we say, OK, now we want you to give us exactly what we want when you want it. I think it's a human reaction if you go through a divorce, uh, not then to fall over to give people the thing that they're asking for. I think you also have to recognise in financial services, which is our biggest export industry, biggest contributor to taxation in the UK, that the shape of the financial services industry in France or in Germany is very different from the UK, so the rules that they would come up with would be different from the rules that they'd come up with with Britain in the EU.